What is the significance behind this book? Twenty twenty two. What will happen to us when the Anunnaki return to Earth? Is a disturbing and thought compelling read, detailing events which will transpire in all of our lifetimes. The purpose and the creation of this video is to inform the viewer of some of the more stranger and bizarre things being spoken about within our lives. And considering this book is supposedly detailing prophetic events, I felt strongly compelled to create this video, and in doing so, have created a space for us to have open discourse surrounding these more obscure topics. I hope you, the viewer, are willing to keep an open mind to the things we are about to discuss, because despite what your personal take on this is, I still strongly believe that this is very interesting and even entertaining material. I am not an advocate or supporter of any of the ideas being expressed within this book, but I feel it's only right that I present you guys with all the information so we'll all we'll be on the same page moving forward in this video. Everything said thus forth will be the ideas of the author. However, when speaking, I will speak from a first person perspective as if I was the author to make things easier to follow along. Very important to know that at some point in modern human history, the missing link that evolved us from what we know today as barbaric, savage apes and lower hominids to the more advanced and sophisticated species we are today is due to our genetic code literally being manipulated and encoded with alien DNA in order to see the human race progress further in our evolutionary cycle. And that their initial reasoning for visiting our planet millennia ago had to do with collecting vital resources to preserve their own planet. Prior to the Anunnaki's arrival, or prior to the Sumerian civilization, I should say, uh, and they actually show, depict humanoid reptilians, even breastfeeding. Uh, and these are some amazing artifacts that are real, that are actually in museums, and I actually have a replica of two of them at my house. One is a male, and one is a female that's actually breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Anunnaki get here, they really want to... Um, uh, take us to another level, but to make us subservient at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's very possible that the main objective that they had were, was to uh, make, a, make a slave race that would be subservient to them, that would worship them, and that they would do all their bidding uh, with no questions asked. And that's exactly what they did. If we were to stop for a moment and look into this, it would seem as though, according to the historical records, we can trace a unique connection between the Sumerian kings list and their royal families with this, extraterre this extraterrestrial species. And also, if we are to make that connection, it can also be assumed that the royal, the English royal bloodline is also connected with this, or at least some other extraterrestrial entity. The earliest form of humans were robot-like in appearance and mental capacity, only able to take orders without questioning. However, it was the more recent design in our genetic coding, designed by the more aesthetically inclined female counterpart, which contributes to the more symmetrical and artistically attuned humans that we find ourselves to be today. These extraterrestrials have been in conflict with another alien race who have been involved with human affairs known as the Greys. The Greys are typically the ones who you will find involved with abductions and cruel human hybrid experimentation projects. This was drawn by Paula Watson, who had repeated abductions from 1983 onward after she and her husband, Ron, watched small gray-skinned non-humans float a black cow from a nearby pasture into a strange craft that was guarded by what they call... <clears throat> the beginning of the book goes into detail about various extraterrestrial technologies, which have been utilized in order to monitor and predict the activities of the human race throughout our history, using a tool they call the Anunnaki code, which is essentially described as a device that they use to foresee forthcoming events in the immediate and long-term future. A variety of significant world altering events are said to occur within the following decade. I'll give the viewer a few moments to take in these visuals. By 2025, African Americans will become the majority in the United States. A major military confrontation between Muslim countries and Islam will decimate many nations on the globe. By 2028, 
life expectancy in the United States will be an average of 130 years. By 2033, humans will have spatial galactic implants. The most significant of events and the purpose of this video although is about the one expected to occur next year in September of 2022. According to the author, this extraterrestrial species, which we have come to know as the Anunnaki, landed in Phoenicia, which is now modern-day Lebanon, over 400,000 years ago, and lived in open direct contact with humans for thousands of years before eventually leaving Earth due to the irreversible contamination which had been done to our DNA over the generations by the greys. The primary premise of this book essentially categorizes human beings into three different groups. Those who are highly contaminated, people of mid-level contamination, and then those people of low-level contamination. The book details a variety of different examples of behavior that could potentially categorize you into one of these three groups of contamination levels. the face of the planet by very specific means. People of pure and clean auras will have their memory wiped as they are transdimensionally transported to an alien constructed makeshift planetary structure, where they will be unaware of this shift in environment due to the Anunnaki wiping their memory following the cleansing of Earth, where they will be returned after 72 hours. The last group who will be dealt with by the Anunnaki make up those who are unable to completely cleanse themselves of contamination in time, but aren't inherently evil to the core, and so therefore these people will not be eradicated. These people make up the low contamination category. These people will travel through transdimensional portals known as stargates, where they will have unimaginable supernatural experiences before eventually coming through to the other side of the stargate, where they will be tested by the Anunnaki awaiting them as a sort of final judgment to determine if they can be cleansed of the contaminated Gray's DNA. If they fail the evaluation, the Anunnaki will not annihilate them. Instead, they will be left on this isolated clone planet where they will live out the rest of their lives until eventually dying out as they will be rendered unable to reproduce. In pop culture, portals are also commonly referred to as stargates. The term stargate has been used to describe devices that allow practical, rapid travel between two distant locations. But the problem with a portal they're not stable. Uh, they're like rubber bands being pulled as tight as being let go. They snap, and then when they stop, that's where they are. So there's no rhyme or reason where they're moving around. So if you enter a portal, you know, God knows where you're going to end up at. <clears throat> Following the purging of Earth and the return of its uncontaminated human inhabitants, a number of monumental economic and societal changes will occur. The current monetary system will be abolished as there will be no need to monopolize and hoard resources as everything we need will be freely available to us. The military industrial complex will lose a significant position and authority on the world stage. The world's religions will be abolished as it was said that they were fabricated and imposed on, er on early human civilization in order to control them and ensure their obedience. 
along with a slew of new technological inventions which will make everyday life safer and more convenient. Essentially, society as we know it will transform into a socialist dystopia, and life as as we know it will forever be changed. At the very end of this incredible and bizarre book, we get brief detail on the true significance and relationship of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. The argument being made is that the true teachings of Jesus and the true original doctrine of the church has been drastically altered and propagandized by the religious leaders of the world to control and manipulate the masses, particularly the Vatican, and that within the near future, the Vatican, along with its supporters and political leaders, will be wiped out and stripped of their global influence. 